If you're a musician looking to make a music video on a budget, then you've come to the right place because in today's video, I wanna show you how to do just that using your creativity, a little resourcefulness, and a few tips and tricks that'll help you get there. I would know because I've done this all myself, and I would say the results have been pretty awesome. If you're watching this music video, you're most likely a musician who also wants to put out the music that you're gonna make a music video of. Am I right? Well, with Ditto Music, you can release unlimited tracks worldwide to all the major streaming platforms that you can possibly think of and maintain 100% of the royalties that you make. Now, if this does sound intriguing to you, be sure to check the link in the description for a free 30-day trial that we have to see if you like the service for yourself. And also, if you end up liking what you hear or learn in this video today, be sure to leave a like on the video and comment down below any other tips that you may have that maybe I didn't mention in today's video that can help other artists put out music videos on their own as well. Step number one is to be unapologetically DIY. The first step to making a great DIY music video is to fully embrace that DIY role, AKA it's time for you to get your own hands dirty over multiple roles. Now, of course, you're probably most likely the artist of this song, but taking on multiple roles can save you a lot of money on your project because you don't have to hire these individual directors and cinematographers or editors. And you end up having more control over the final product that you put out because you're not depending on all these other people's inputs and influencing your thoughts on your own artistic work. You are the one that's editing, shooting, directing, so you have all the calls, you make all the shots. Also, in a sense, you're not having to wait around for people to finish these different things, like an editor, for instance, who may take forever to finish editing your music video product, especially if they're working with other clients. If you are the editor of your own music video, the video comes out when you're done with it, right? The drawback, of course, with this is that you have to depend on yourself. You can end up spreading yourself too thin if you take on too many roles too fast, or especially on bigger projects where you should be shipping off the labor to somebody else. But with a little dedication, a little time and effort, and some organization, things can go really smoothly. And that brings me to step number two, get organized. Now to make sure your DIY music video is indeed a success, you're gonna to need to be as organized as humanly possible. This means creating a detailed plan of actions, setting objectives, making different outlines, and also setting a realistic budget for your video. So once you've got the video concept all together, you can make a checklist of everything that you will need to actualize that concept whether or not you will need an editor that can you know, bring together some of the more difficult aspects of editing like visual effects. Or will you need a choreographer, some dancers, uh, actresses or actors for your video? If you have a lot of moving shots, are you gonna need something like a gimbal to handle those kind of shots? Do you need to rent gear from somewhere? And how much of that budget is gonna go towards that rental? All these things come into play when you're getting organized and it is important if you're doing especially a bigger project to remain as organized as possible. If you're really brave though, you may not always need to get a super organized plan to shoot your music videos because maybe you wanna do something very impromptu. And I have found in my own experience that sometimes even the most impromptu, spontaneous video shoots can end up being some of the most creatively rewarding and visually appealing. I mean, we are artists after all for a reason. We're supposed to be able to exercise these different artistic abilities. So why not during a music video shoot? For instance, for a more simplified video idea, you can do a one take, with your friends walking downtown and there's somebody holding a camera in front of your face and it's just one shot you singing the lyrics that can actually come across as very authentic and it's very easy to make also there's pretty much no editing required there because all you do is play the music and you have one take even if you want to go for a more complex music video arrangement you don't always have to be planned sometimes you can have one location that you film in but you just film a bunch of different things people dancing yourself singing in these different spots of that location and later in the editing process you just piece it together to make it seem more dynamic this is one that we shot actually in a parking lot somewhere in los angeles and uh, had this cool little fire escape that we were shooting um, you know, the video against. But also in another location, we saw this blimp flying in the air and it perfectly matched the outfit of the artist. So I'm just thinking like, let's film this angle in this location so that it looks like we planned it. It looks like we rented a blimp <laughs> for this music video when actually it was just there by chance. 
Sometimes just improvising on the spot can bring about some of the best ideas and visuals in your video. Now, step number three is recruiting friends and other creatives. When you're working on a tight budget, it is super important to use all of your resources, like your creative friends, for instance, who can work for free if they want to, or at a very low rate because, you know, they want to give you the homie hookup. This could include actors, dancers, makeup artists, grip people, you know, people who do the lighting and things like that. Just by gathering all of the resources that you have available to you from the people that you already know, you can really create a collaborative and supportive environment for this music video to thrive from the ground up. And also these people, more likely than not, feel like they're a part of something, even if it's not huge, it's still a part of a, a creative endeavor. And that community and the creative community is one of the best feelings that I can say to have. Step number four is to get crafty with your concept. One of the best things about DIY music videos is they allow you the space to really get creative. Because you're working on such a low budget, you kind of have to make do in other ways where your money does not allow you to do things that bigger budgets do, you know? You have to think outside of the box and think, what can I do with what I have? And how can I make that seem more complex or more grand than it really actually is? Whatever you decide to do, this can include different things like props or costumes, and even visual effects that you can find on websites like Storyblocks or motionvfx.com. Or even if you go the practical effect route, where you're kind of tricking the, the viewer into believing something that's not actually happening. So you really kind of have to think outside of the box if you want to get fancy schmancy with your edits. And there are many different ways to do this. Step number five is to choose one location and stick to it milk it for everything that it's worth. One main example that I have for this is literally the room that I'm sitting in right now, my studio. I've shot about four different music videos in here, but you wouldn't know that because of the way that I lit the room with my different tools. I literally have one of those tools right here. Light tubes, light tubes, and even my Nanoleaf light panels in the background. To be able to squeeze out four music videos because of that lighting is due to the way that I shot the music videos. You can also use services like peerspace.com to find different locations that are primed for music video shoots and even some physical places that you can go to that are kind of like music video rental spaces where you can rent out a few hours and they'll have these different setups from lights to jungle fields and flower walls and things like that if they're in your area. I know LA has a few of these, but a quick Google search can show you if you have some of these in your area. Now, speaking of lighting, let's go to step number six. Good lighting is everything. Lighting can make or break any video, to be honest, not just music videos, but any video. So it's important that you get it right, but know that you don't have to spend a lot of money to do that. Whether it's natural or artificial, you wanna just experiment with different angles with the camera. You can go to a location and check it out beforehand, maybe get some test shots on your phone. But in a lot of the cases, what I do is I show up the day of, I know the location, I know what I want to shoot, and I'll just shoot multiple things on that day as long as I have the time. And if one shot doesn't work, it doesn't work. If one does work, then it does. You have all this information, all these shots to go off of to use. Now, if you don't have natural light or you don't have any lighting to begin with, once again, I would recommend some very cheap lighting you can find on Amazon. That's where I've gotten all of my lighting from. These lights are about 75 bucks on Amazon. You buy two of them, you can get two colors going on and you can see how dynamic something like that looks because of two lights that I spent $150 on all together. It's all up to you, but you do have to just Think about these things, think outside the box and don't get so stuck on location and oh, it must be here, it must be there. Sometimes it could be in a little shoe box, you know? It just takes some good lighting. Now, step number seven is to consider your camera operation. And by this, I mean, it could be from your phone, your cell phone, your iPhone, your Samsung, your Google Pixel phone, whatever kind of phone you have, as long as it's not something that shoots 720, unless you wanna go for a low budget look because that is a thing, okay? These days, even phones can record 4K videos, which is amazing. Now, if you do wanna take it a step up from your cell phone and have a look a little bit more professional and get some of that background blur separation, that's where something like a DSLR comes into play or a mirrorless camera. They're not all expensive. They don't have to be expensive. There are ones as cheap as $600 that will record 4K video for you and have those lenses that you can detach and get those really clean shots from. If you're ready to take it a step further from there, you can go to something like a cinema camera, which is what I'm shooting right here. These types of cameras generally require a little bit more knowledge and experience in cinematography and shooting videos because they have more complex 
you know, technology and, and buttons and things that you have to know how to work before you get that good image. So I'm gonna say to you out there, don't just go out and blow $3,000 on a cinema camera if you haven't even figured out how to use one in the first place. I guarantee you it's not gonna magically give you better quality. Sometimes it can hinder your music videos. Whatever tool that you use, whether it's a smartphone, a DSLR, or a cinema camera, whatever it's gonna be, the important thing to know is it's not just about the price of the camera or the quality, but it's also about how you experiment with your exposure, your angles, your framing of the objects, and the movements that you make with that camera, whether you're using a gimbal or not, that creates that dynamic image that somebody's gonna look at. Finally, step number eight is to allocate the proper amount of time to post-production. So after you've planned everything, after you've recorded everything, after all the filming is done, it's time to edit your video. And this is where you really bring your vision to life because filming, yes, you, you get the image, you make this stuff high quality, you get your costumes, your makeup, and the artists and rapping and dancing and pop locking, whatever you're gonna do, you could film the best stuff in the world, but if your edit is not on point, then the music video is still gonna suck. So it's important to set aside enough time for post-production and allowing the editor, if you have one, to edit that video for you. Or if you're the editor, give yourself enough time to craft this music video in the way that you want it to look, from the color grading, if you have to do that, to the different cuts that you make, if there are a lot of cuts any visual effects that you wanna to add to it, if there are any of those. You have to take your time. If something doesn't look right or doesn't feel right, then slow down, buddy, okay? You don't have to rush it out. If you're taking that long to edit this video, then you wanna think about maybe outsourcing it to somebody else or just, hello, McFly. <laughs> I shouldn't have did that, bro. Talking yourself out of that slump, because the worst thing that can happen for you in editing a music video, and this has happened to me, is getting stuck in the paralysis by analysis loophole. You're just stuck going around in circles because you keep analyzing things and saying, this is not good enough, that's not good enough, and the music video never comes out. And by the time you do finish it, the song is long past its prime. Now you may have heard this before, but Casey Neistat once said, done is better than perfect. Sometimes your video, or all the time, your video is not gonna be perfect. Neither is your song, neither is anything that you do in your creative, you know, career. But as long as you get something done that you can somewhat be proud of, and it didn't take you forever to do it, even if it did, at least you can say you put something out, right? You finished something, you completed it, you, you took the chance, you released it out to the general population and now you can move on to the next one because the most important thing is that you get that experience under your belt so that you release more music videos over time. And each time you put one out, you get better and better and better and more streamlined. So there it is, our top tips for making an epic music video on a budget. Just remember, with a little creativity, a little resourcefulness, and some hard work, you can make a music video that you're really truly proud of and that other people can resonate with as well. So stop thinking about it, stop overanalyzing it, go out there, plan it, and do it. I wanna see some music videos, all right? Don't forget to leave a like on this video, subscribe for more videos like this in the future, and leave a comment down below if you have any questions or comments. As always, I am Legend and stay legendary.